Hello everyone, this is Mr. Nardelli again. Tonight I'm going to be talking to you about rates, ratios, and proportions. First off, our smallest one is a ratio. And a ratio is quite simply just a comparison of two numbers. It's written in three different ways. For example, if I'm comparing 385 and 27, I could say 385 to 27 with the word TO. I could also say 385 colon 27, or the most common way, 385 over 27, written as a fraction. Now a ratio is the real basic way, but next we'll talk about rates. A rate is a ratio where two types of measurement are compared. Notice the difference, it's measurement. Up here you had just numbers, here you're going to have measurement and they sometimes can be compared to one. So for example, I could say two teaspoons of sugar to one cup of flour. We see that a lot in recipes um, rates. 25 miles per hour, 5,720 feet per mile. Now, what you're going to be have to what you're going to have to do when it comes to mathematics is the next one called a proportion. Now, a proportion is used to compare two ratios or to make equivalent fractions. So it's another way of making equivalent fractions. Now, you will have some word problems in here, but more importantly here, before we begin to set up the word problems, we'll concentrate on solving proportions. Now remember, it's a comparison between two ratios. So, if I were to ask you to solve this problem, 1 half equals x over 6. You might be able to look at that pretty easily and solve it, but the process would be, just like equivalent fractions, 2 times 3 equals 6, so 1 times 3 gives me my x, or x equals 3. There's another way to solve these if those numbers are not so compatible, and that's called cross-multiplying. So I've taken the same proportion, 1 over 2 equals x over 3. Now what I can do to solve that is first cross-multiply x times 2, that's going to give me just 2x here. And then I'm going to cross multiply the other way. 1 times 6, and that gives me my 6. So I've got 2x equals 6, or 2 times what equals 6. Then when I solve it, I just do 6 divided by 2 gives me 3, so my x equals 3. So I can solve proportions both ways. A lot of times these numbers aren't super compatible and cross multiplying would work best. Now let's take our proportion if we have it in a word problem. So let's look at this word problem. Asanji took a trip to Mexico. Upon leaving he decided to convert all of his pesos back into dollars. How many dollars did he receive if he exchanged 42.7 pesos at a rate of $5.30 equals 11.1 pesos. Now what you're doing when you're looking for three parts in this proportion word problem, three parts will be identified and you'll have to find the fourth. So as I look at this, I go back and I can see, well, one of the parts is 42.7 pesos. I'm going to just underline it. Another part that is already identified is $5.30. And the third part that is identified is 11.1 .1 pesos. So you see I've got three things identified. Now what I'm going to have to do is use proportional reasoning to find the fourth one. I'm going to have to set this up as two fractions. Well, as you can see, I've got $5.30 equals 11.1 .1 pesos. So that is my one fraction. Now one thing I'm doing here to make things a lot easier is putting the measurement. In this case the measurement is type of money. P for pesos, dollar sign for dollars. So I've used 
these two parts. Now I've got to put 42.7 pesos in there somewhere on the next fraction. Because I put pesos here, I know to put 42.7 on the top to coincide with the 11.1. .1. And then on the bottom, I've got my variable x dollars. I just put it that way. So we can't really solve that too easily with 42.7 and 11.1. .1, so cross multiplying is probably the best bet. I'm going to start cross multiplying x times 11.1. .1, that gives me 11.1x. .1 My next move is 42.7 times 5.30. I did that ahead of time, and that gives me 22.631. Now I divide. It's not super fun dividing that, but it works out. I do 22.6, excuse me, 20, 226.31 divided by 11.1. .1. After I go through the math, I end up getting 20.388, and the decimal actually goes out pretty far. Since this is dollars, I'm going to round to the nearest cent. Here's the nearest cent, 8, so that means I'm going to look to the right. This 8 here in the hundreds place is larger than 5, so it's going to bump that 8 up to 9. So I get $20.39. And that's all there is to proportional reasoning. If you need any help, please email me at nardelli.efsc at gmail.com. Thanks.